Okay, so Dr. Webster, did you have a chance to sign the consent form? Uh, I thought I did. Did you get it? You didn't get it? Um, Lauren no. should be the one to get it if you sign. Okay. It. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so again, my name is Janine. I'm a senior at St. Peter's University and Dr. Webster, I'm gonna ask you to please state your name and spell it out slowly. Okay. El Nardo, E-L-N-A-R-D-O, Webster, W-E-B-S-T-E-R. Okay. And today is April 23rd, 2021. And the purpose of this meeting is for the oral history interview celebrating St. Peter's 150th anniversary. Okay. <clears throat> you know what? Can I call you back on my computer? Okay. Yes, um, I, I would just stop for the recording, but I'll, I would have to start again, but that's fine. Start okay, to start. Yeah. yeah, just stop for a second, okay? Okay. I need to leave this phone open because I think we're going to be a while, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, about an hour. So you could go ahead and I'll stop the recording. Okay. Janine, yes. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so how's your setup? Are you good? I'm good. Okay, great. I hope you um, get yourself comfortable. So I'm going to transition <laughs> um, to the interview right now. So welcome again, Dr. Webster. I'm so glad I have the opportunity um, to talk with you about your time at St. Peter's. So okay. to start off, can you uh, tell me about your childhood, describe your childhood, your family, and where you grew up before you came to St. Peter's? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm from New Jersey, and I came to St. Peter's um, from a uh, after going to a community college in Texas for two years. I came to St. Peter's on an athletic scholarship. I attended Lincoln High School in Jersey City, and then I attended Wharton, Wharton Texas uh, College in Wharton, Texas, uh, and. Uh, I grew up, uh, you know, one of six children. Uh, we were we were born in, in born in Harlem, Harlem, New York, and then we moved to Jersey. And uh, I my childhood was uh, a typical high school student who happened to play a lot of basketball, and uh, that's what brought me to St. Peter's. So. Um, yeah, I came from a large family, one of six children. And, uh, you know, nothing, nothing uh, special. You know, I'm an urban, pretty urban kid, pretty much. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm actually one of seven children, so that's uh, <laughs> interesting that you're one of six. Okay, where were now? Where were you born and raised? I was born in Secaucus. Oh, you right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you, 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 your uh, parents are from where? My parents are Palestinian, but my dad was actually born in Venezuela. Oh man! So do you speak any Spanish? I don't speak Spanish, but my grandmother does. Okay. Okay. So, Doctor Webster, you were a transfer student. Yes. Yes. How was that experience? Uh, very, very good. It was, uh, you know, uh, very rewarding. Uh, like I said, my journey was through athletics. I transferred because of athletics uh, on scholarship. And, uh, you know, we, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, I had a very successful athletic career at St. Peter's, both as, as a team and personally. So, that transfer experience worked out for me perfectly. Okay, uh, I transferred from a from Texas to Jersey City, and uh, the, the the academic experience in Texas uh, was much different than the academic experience at St. Peter's. Um, you know, I I was doing 
attending a school in Texas during the Jim Crow era. Are you familiar with Jim Crow? And uh, I came back to New Jersey, um, but you know, having been in Texas and experiencing uh, all of the Jim Crow uh, policies and living and culture, uh, that 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 was really what the the experience was. So I was glad to get back to New Jersey, <laughs> okay, uh, because we didn't have segregated uh, facilities here in New Jersey. Uh, you know, we all could attend the same uh, local and public uh, facilities and uh, we you know you could you weren't discrimination it wasn't uh, it wasn't here as as well as as much as it was in other parts of the country at the time um, and I came during the time that we were there was the civil rights struggle so the thinking was totally different at the time no one was accepted at the time uh, men women black white brown, you know, Muslim, no, no, you know, gay, straight, no, nobody, nobody was accepted at the time. This was, you know, pre, it sounds like pre-Civil War almost at this time. But, um, but that, those were the, you know, conditions. And I was at St. Peter's and we were <clears throat> very socially active. There was a lot of, lot going on. We were involved in the, in, in the civil rights struggle and the revolution, uh, in this, you know, the civil rights revolution of the United States at the time. And, you know, it, it changed. It changed the whole country, and therefore changed the world. So, can you give me a few examples of some of the things students at St. Peter's did, or that you took part of? Took part um, in. Yeah. yeah. Well, I primarily I was like athletics, um, but I was also a member of the Black Collegiate Cultural Society. Um, I was also a member of the Argus Eyes, um, and uh, that, that was. Pretty much it, okay, for me, because um, the athletics was very demanding. Practice every day, you know, travel and etc. Um, and then I was a very good student at the time as well. So, um, you know, that my time was split there. The Argus Eyes was, you know, theater. Um, somewhat, you know, get a chance to put on some plays, and uh, and then the Black Collegiate Cultural Society is where my energy was directed from, you know, social causes and issues. Uh, what did you major or minor in when you were at St. Peter's and why did you choose that specific course of study? Okay, so I majored in sociology and I had minored in education. Uh, sociology was very important to me because it was, uh, you know, it, it gave me an understanding of current times, uh, what, you know, of what life was about and and you know, uh, you know, you know, from from a sociological perspective, and uh, the, the education I made minor in education because I thought maybe one day I might want to, I might want to teach, you know, and uh, I did from I did so it turned out to be a, a it's a you know a, a very worthwhile investment for me, uh, and but I later <clears throat> when I graduated from St. Peter's I went on to play professional basketball for seven years, so I was. Um, you know, I had a dual, I, I should have said I majored also in, in, in athletics there, okay. Uh -huh. But uh, no, sociology and uh, history, uh, my major and minor. You majored in history? Yes. Oh, well, wow. I, well, sociology, I didn't major in history. Mm -hmm. um, my, I had, I, my education gave me my history certification for education. Okay, but let me just say that you're a history major, right? Yes, I'm a history major. Right. Well, I was an education major with a focus in history. So I got certified, certified to teach history, which is, I think, different than being a history major. You're going to, you might teach it on an academic, on a university level. Or, yes, if I continue um, yeah. in grad school. Yeah. So now, when you, what are you going to do with a major in, in history? Law school. Ah, okay. Hello. <laughs> yeah. My son is an attorney. So. Is he? Yeah, yeah. So How many I, kids do you have? I have two. Two, two, two boys. Um, both are grown and gone. <laughs> okay. 
my oldest one is uh, he lives in still in Jersey and he's an attorney and he has two daughters and my youngest one he's uh, he's in California and he's not married or anything so uh, you know that that's you know that he's an entertainment uh, specialist I don't know, you know the videos and the filming and the, you know all that kind of stuff the Hollywood scene okay. Do you have any attorneys in your family? I don't. Uh, I'm actually a first generation law student. Um, and all of my sisters, I have four older sisters. So uh -huh. they're all like math or bio. Oh, and then okay. there's me. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're academians. Okay. Yeah. Is, are there any teach, teaching? Yeah. So my second oldest sister she's a teacher she was a teacher in new jersey and she actually just moved to philly okay what's she teaching she teaches sixth grade okay yeah and your oldest sister my oldest sister she um works in a lab she studied biology okay yeah. nice very nice thank you now your parents are you from new jersey yeah, so I'm from New Jersey when my, yeah, my, yeah, we've always lived in New Jersey. My sister is the only one that like lives in a different state. You, did you attend Seacoke's High School? I didn't. I'm from North Bergen, actually. Oh, okay. How about North Bergen High School? I did attend North Bergen High School. All of us did. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're North Bergen folks. Okay. Yeah, right yeah. next. Yeah, really close to St. Peter's. Yeah, yeah, right up the boulevard there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm curious, Dr. Webster, how large were the departments when you were a student at St. Peter's and what were the classes like? Well, the departments were very mm -hmm. small. I mean, you know, where you are today is like unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> you know, and the, the classes were very small. Uh, you know, it was a different population then. Uh, you know, there was the beginning in which we just started, uh, we had just admitted females, women in, into the university. So that was an experience, but very small, intimate classes, okay? I, in comparison to what we, where you are today, where you could have 20, 25, 30 students in a class today or more, you know, 10, 15 students was, was a lot then, that, you know. So, uh, and then the university was a lot smaller. Um, you know, I'm, I'm out now 50, 50, uh, 52 years maybe at this point, 1969. I did my, I did my graduate work at St. Peter's as well. I did my master's degree at St. Peter's um, and I did my doctorate at Seton Hall. So uh, undergrad and uh, my BA and master's at St. Peter's and uh, my, my doctorate at Seton Hall. Okay. Are you, are you intending on, well, you're going to get a law degree, I guess that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you decided to stick to the Catholic schools? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I was comfortable there, okay? Yeah. Although I'm, I'm from Lincoln High School, uh, public school, but I, I stuck with the Catholic school. The Jesuit Catholic. <laughs> and yes, where, are Jes planning, where are you planning on going to law school? Uh, so I'm going to either, I'm staying in this area and New Jersey only has two law schools, Rutgers and Seton Hall. So it's going to be one of those or, um, one of the law schools in New York, depending on like their, the admission cycle to get into law school is a lot different than college because they uh -huh. have like a rolling admission. So you okay. don't get all of your decisions at the same time. And it makes it a little difficult, um, to kind of choose a school and get yourself situated. But yeah, I'm not going like anywhere far or anything. Okay. My son attended Rutgers. He did? Did he yeah. like Rutgers? Yeah. It yeah. was right there in law. It was local. It worked. He got a, you know, great degree. He's done very well in, you know, in law. Um, so he, and he's still around, but, you know, he's done very well there. Okay. Mm -hmm. so How you, proud what, were you? Uh, what, what do you, you, what do you, which which school are you leaning to? Which which would you, you like to be accepted into? Um, Rutgers has a great program for minority students um, because the law is 
predominantly dominated um, by a lot of white students. Um, a lot of male students as well. And Rutgers ha does have like that great support system and a great program and a great network for minority students. That's right. um, so I like yeah. that. Yeah. Now my brother-in-law, he went to NYU, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was different there. And then my other brother-in-law went to Ohio State. So, but now you, 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 you're leaning toward Rutgers? Is that, that's what you're... I was leaning towards Rutgers, but there's not a lot of opportunities to actually sit in a class and experience it in Rutgers. So I don't know if I want to kind of make that commitment without knowing what it's like, because they are completely online right now in Rutgers, like St. Peter's, and they're not allowing any visits or anything of the sort. Okay. Yeah. So now, so you, NYU, have, is that, that's close? NYU is close, yes. Did you look um, into that? I did look into NYU. It's a little bit um, expensive, yes. not a little bit, very expensive. Yeah. yeah. So that's um, something I want to, I'm trying to keep in mind because they do offer scholarships as well. Um, different yeah. schools offer scholarships. Yeah. yeah. And then Seton Hall is, um, you know, that's close and local and then that works for a lot of people too, you know? Yeah. They do. Um, it is very close and they're actually a lot smaller than Rutgers. So their class sizes are smaller as well as their student body. Okay. Good. Now, what, what aspect, uh, aspect of law would you like to go into? What do you, or you, you're not sure yet? I am not sure. There's a lot of things that I like. Yeah. I really liked um, constitutional law. So I took that at St. Peter's um, with the political science department, but obviously that was only kind of the very, very low um, legal studies um, compared to what law school would be like. And I really liked all the aspects of that, like um, the civil rights stuff we talked about, as well as the religious freedom aspects of that. Um, but I also really like immigration law and all of that. So I'm kind of not sure every, <laughs> everywhere, yeah. Okay, good. Well, you got time, you know, just, yeah. yeah. And, you, and, you, and you're living at home. Yeah. So you really don't, you know, you can you can afford to be deliberate and mm -hmm. and, and take your time and you know because you, you don't you don't you don't have that economic pressure on you to to pay for a, you know an apartment Housing. or children or anything like that at this point, which is which yeah. is great. Yeah. Yeah, because that's a lot, especially if you're moving out of state. That's right. Yeah. So Dr. Webster, I know professors have been a huge influence at me at St. Peter's. Can you tell me about a professor at St. Peter's that left an impression on you? Well, yeah, the sociology mm -hmm. back in the days, uh, you know, the sociology guys were very forward thinking, very progressive uh, and, and motivating to, to go out and change the world. Okay. Uh, you know, it's like I said, it's been 53, 54 years now. So, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, but those, the, and the education, Dr. Caulfield was very, very uh, influential. He's an education professor and head of the education department. Um, and he was extremely uh, influential in, in my choosing it, uh, history, uh, education as a minor. And, you know, so, and he was a very great person, very forward thinking, and uh, I had a chance to also, uh, you know, be, uh, get his, have his brother as a professor at Seton Hall. So his, <laughs> right, he, he did, he did the undergrad and, and graduate program in education at St. Peter's and his brother was, was in charge of it at Seton Hall. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it was, uh, the Caulfield family was very influential in my life. The educate school of education actually named after him. I just when you said the name. That's right. Yes. That's right. It is. Yeah. That's right. I, they did name it. I forgot all about that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, were there any female professors when you were at St. Peter's? I don't remember any. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, no. Uh, he's. You know, I can't, let's see. I'm trying to think if there were any female administrators even, like, you know. 
there were some uh, staff members, administrative staff members that were female. Uh, when I forgot her name. Still around, but uh, teachers and professors, no. Okay. Do you have the history of that? Do you know when they started uh, having first uh, female professors at St. Peter's? I don't. I know when they had um, female students at St. Peter's. Right. Um, right. Yeah. But in my interview with Dean Doria, he mentioned that there was one female professor that he recalls. So I was wondering if you had a different experience, but I'm guessing yeah, it was I, mostly um, male professors at that oh, time. Yeah, I, I was there at the same time as Dr. Doria. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about a friendship that took root at St. Peter's? Well, I like I was very fortunate because I had uh, the you know an athletic team um, that uh, that uh, yeah, you know I had friends and we are still friends today. You know, you know the guys who played ball together while we were there athletically. Uh, one in one in particular, um, Harry Laurie is a friend of mine. He he was in my, he was best man at my wedding and. Uh, we still work. We still are together today, and and so that's been a lasting friendship. But I also have uh, friends and Tom McMahon, who is uh, also a colleague of mine, and we are friends today. We see each other today, uh, and then there's three or four other friends that uh, you know that are I see you know guys that I play ball with guys. They we we're very we stay in touch. We have dinner. We go out. We still our friends today. So yeah, those are those are relationships. Dr. Doria was there and he's a friend and that, you know, so you you there are a lot, I have a lot of relationships with, with St. Peter's people. Um, you know, of course for extending 50 years, 55 years now. So, you know, so you can you think about that? Will you be able to say that 50 years from now? That, Oh, you know, I met this person at St. Peter's when I was there, and we're still friends today. Okay. I think so. I, think so? I hope yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Was it easy to make friends at St. Peter's, you think, because it was so small? Um, yeah. What was the student body like? Well, student body was small, but everybody knew everybody. It was, you know, like almost like a large high school type thing. Okay. But what, ex what extracurricular activities are you involved in? So I am part of the Muslim Student Association. Um, of I'm on student government. Okay. I'm course. a senator for my class. Um, okay. I also write for the newspaper, and I'm part of the Students for Peace and Justice Club. Nice. I mean, we sound alike. I like that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah. Right. You know, government. Is you know you you're a government person. Your causes and you know. Are you with the powwow? Is that? Yes, we're actually, we just changed our name literally, I think like last week or two weeks ago, we're now the St. Peter's Tribune. But yes, I'm the opinions editor. Why do you change the name? It goes back a hundred years, the powwow. The, it was named after Michael Pow. And actually as a history major, I got to do a lot of research on who he was yeah. and some of the influence that he had on um, St. Peter's and as a group, we just felt like what he did and who he was didn't portray who St. Peter's is, especially when we say that we are men and women for others um, and that we care about that decision, decision to change the name. And it was like a whole process, but yeah. um, we were able to do it together. And that was really great that we sort of made that happen together as a group, as a collective group. Okay, good, all right. So, all right, the, 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 the Tribune. So did you guys put a story out letting everybody know now that it, the powwow, it's not, doesn't exist in the name of powwow anymore? That, yeah, okay. so we um, announced in September and I think President Cornacchio also put out an email. Okay. And then we've been working with the newspaper, the student government, students for peace and justice, um, administration like Vice President McCann and Dean Travis um, and we uh, just this month officially changed the newspaper so our website changed but all of the previous stories are still on the website 
Um, and President Kornakia sent out another email announcing it, but we also put out our own statements. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. So you got, you've gotten the word out there. Yeah. Yes. Um, so actually, it's kind of like your answer, like bringing up my questions before I asked them, because my next question was about extracurriculars when you were at St. Peter's, ironically enough. Um, and I know we talked about it a little bit. What was what was it like being part of those extracurriculars as a St. Peter's student when you were there? Um, and I, how did you balance all of that with your athletics and um, being on the basketball team and all of that? Because I know athletes have a very, very rigid and strict schedule. Yes. Yeah. Well, it was very demanding. You know, um, it was like a lot of students, it was like having a job. My extracurricular activity was like having a job that you had to be serious about and uh, put a lot of time and energy into it. Um, I, I remember one night we had a very big game uh, over in Madison Square Garden. Uh, and the, the night, you know, I had two exams, you know, that same day. And I was up to four or five o'clock in the morning studying for my exams. And, you know, that same day, the next day we had, I had to take my exams. I couldn't get out of my exams. And uh, the biggest game of our life, of our career, you know, because we were very, very successful team. And we were playing in Madison Square Garden for the NIT, a big quarterfinals championship game. And we, I was, you know, you'd say four o'clock in the morning, I'm up studying. So, you know, to, and I had to come in and take those exams that day and, and still go to the game that night. Uh, so that, that kind of an, an example of, you know, how you had to balance your athletics and, um, <clears throat> and how you had to, um, Balance your athletics and 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 your extracurricular activities at the same time. So, um, you know, very demanding. But you know, when you're young like that, <laughs> you can do those kind of things. You know, you guys can you can stay up till, you know, 20, 24 hours a day. You know, and still go and still go to work, still go to school the next day. Um, but you know, that I think back now, I said, oh my God, I can never do that now. Enough, but uh, if that's what it calls for back then. I didn't even know that St. Peter's basketball team played at Madison Garden because that is huge. What did it feel like to be in those types of arenas and to represent um, your school there? Well, it was an unbelievable experience. Um, as a matter of fact, they're naming the new gymnasium after our team the run baby run center and, and uh, that was our team and that was our motto um and so that uh, you know that that and and to have played in Madison square garden and we used to play in front of twenty thousand fans it, it, you know it, like it was nothing uh that's how successful our team was at, during those days uh we we're we still hold the the record for uh was the only team in the country that's that's never lost to Duke University. We've beaten Duke twice, so you know we 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 hold on to that. That's a little thing, but it's a big thing to us. Uh, you know, yeah. So that, that was wonderful, wonderful experience. You you could I. It's hard to describe how 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 wonderful that experience was to see all of their St. Peter's. Now, it wasn't just the, the, the students of St. Peter's who supported us. It was the, the whole community of St. Peter's, the, the whole city and area uh, of people who supported us back in those days. You know, we, we would play our home games at the, at the armory, you know, the Jersey City Armory. Yeah, that's, that was our home court, you know. We, you know, get through 3,000 people every game there and, Stand in standing room only and sold out. Uh, so that those those were the good days of St. Peter's basketball that that we hope will come back, you know, soon. We're doing really well actually. And last year we like we're doing really well. And I heard this year we still are our team making a comeback. Yes. Yes. The, the, the new coach and the guys, are they've really come together. So, um, you know, we're, we're very fortunate. You know, we're on the rise again. 
So I'm curious about this model of run, baby, run. Why was that? Um... <laughs> uh, well, it, it was our model because we were, we were very fast. Uh, we were a very fast moving team and we scored a lot of points. You know, we would outscore our points sometimes two to one. And <clears throat> um, hold on one second. And uh, we would, uh, you know, we, and so the papers and the media called us the run baby run team. And you know, so, you know, that's, that's how we got the name. That's why we got the name because we were extremely offensive, we were very fast, uh, but we had, there was a science to our, to our speed and to our fastness that was, uh, that led us to success. Uh, if, did, if you, I don't know if you, we, are, are you familiar with the term a fast break? No. Okay, okay. Well, that's when basketball teams, when they, you know, are very quick and they run a fast break. Okay, we were we run fast breaks. You know, we could start and and move quickly. Okay, uh, it's not only were we physically into the game, but we were mentally into the game, and we were alert and and quick. Not only just you know, so we used that to our advantage. We would run, if run baby run, in the headlines and all the papers and everything. St. Peter's the run baby run team, and so we're very fortunate that one of our players. Um, has made a contribution to St. Peter's to rebuild the, 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 the gymnasium, uh, I think to the tune of $10 million people, and they named it the Run Baby Run Center. Okay. Now, wow, I don't even know we were renaming it. I know we were <laughs> um, rebuilding it, but that's so amazing. That seems like a unforgettable experience. Yeah, and to have an alumni come back and donate ten million dollars to the rebuilding of the center and you know, the renaming of it is just, you know, is is the true blessing. Um. So you were on the basketball team in St. Peter's, and after graduation, can you tell me a little bit about what you did? Because I know you did a lot of things. Um, so can you walk me through that? What was it like graduating? Um, and how did you figure out what you wanted to do next? Well, my, my life was pretty much laid out. I'm like probably one of the few people who can say that um, I didn't have a choice about where I was going after graduation. I was drafted by two professional basketball teams and I got a chance to uh, travel. Uh, I lived in Italy for a while. I lived in Spain. I lived in Switzerland and I played here in the United States, so I played, I, I, I was a basketball, professional basketball player. And then after my, the time went by to, you know, to retire from basketball, I went into education. And so um, I didn't, I've had a very long and successful education career. Uh, I retired as a school superintendent. Uh, and now uh, I've done a lot of work in the area of uh, after school programs, you know, um, I specialize in that area. I, I, I have a department at St. Peter's called Castle, the Center for After School and Expanded Learning. And I've, I've been very fortunate to get grants, education grants for St. Peter's through that department. And I, we've collaborated with the Jersey City Public Schools and other schools as well uh, to provide St. Peter's students opportunities to internship. I think that we've over five or 600 students have interned for that department for me um, to learn how to be after school program practitioners and, and advocates. So, so um, that's a 40 um, year career. Yeah, wow, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And like a very diverse career. You did so different things over the course of your career um you were drafted for the basketball team did you play for the knicks or the nets uh both <laughs> both yes I, I was drafted by both i played for the nets 
And then I put, and I was drafted by the Knicks and I, and I played just for a few minutes for the Knicks. Okay. So, but I, I you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of being with both of those teams. Okay. Um, and was it different going from a college basketball experience to more of a professional playing for um, a team? Yes. Yeah. Big difference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big difference. Uh, but much more demanding, much more physical, uh, much more stressful. Okay. Uh, you know, of course, you know, those were the early days of the NBA and the ABA. And you know, now you see on TV, everybody's a big multimillionaire and everything like that. But we, I, we were in the early days, but it was very competitive. And, uh, but it was, uh, it was a great experience as far as organizational development. Uh, when you play sports, you get a, you get a, a chance to really <clears throat> be uh, indoctrinated with great organizational values. You have to work together as a team, which is the same as an organization. Um, the same guiding principles that drive it, any organization drives a team. you keep in contact with people that you played with? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. I, uh, we, we stay in contact. It's, mm -hmm. it's social and, you know, uh, uh, ceremonial opportunities that we're constantly involved with. Okay. Great. Um, and can I ask, when or why did you make the decision to um, transition from basketball to education? Well, what happens is you're, there's a shelf life to playing professional basketball. You, you know, uh, if someone has to want to pay you and hire you. And once you get, you, the older you get, the less, you know, you, it, 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 it's time to start. Less, the less people want to pay you and, and, and hire you unless you're, you know, one of the great superstars, okay? So it, it, it'll, 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 your career kind of fades itself out. And then you have to make a choice as to, you know, what, you, what, ne what is your next career? And you should be prepared for that move, you know. So you also have done, worked on educational programs outside of St. Peter's. You worked with the State Department in Mali and what what was that like? What was that experience like? Um, what was the experience like putting together and running these educational programs, even in um, local areas like Jer uh, Jersey City or Newark? Um, and why did you decide to get into that specific area of education? Well, I um, after school programs was my area specialty area um, of education. Um, there's so many different aspects of education that a person, you know, it's not just classroom teaching, okay? And uh, my, my area of specialty in education was uh, support programs, supplemental programs. Um, and that's what we call the area of after-school programs because that's a, another opportunity to, to service the whole, whole student. You know, uh, my philosophy has been that, uh, you know, the student is not only mental, but they're physical and emotional as well. And so you, we're talking about servicing the whole student, um, uh, the mental and emotional aspects of the student. And I chose that area uh, because having been involved in athletics gave me a firsthand look at not only athletic programming, but program development. Um, and then being in education, the academic and with the history major and certification, um, <clears throat> you know, that gave me the academic piece. So I put the two piece, put the two skill sets together, and uh, created these wonderful after school, meaningful after school program. Uh, and became an expert, a national expert in the area. And uh, while I was working for the newer public schools, I've always been in education. So. Um, I've just, you know, I, 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 the, the government asked me to, to travel and, and help other cities, districts, countries to, to have after school programs as well. 
So you've actually also traveled to a lot of places. How was that different um, than being in the United States? Well, it, 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 it mm -hmm. gives you a, uh, it gives you uh, a broader perspective on how to be more effective in, in the United States. Um, when you travel abroad and you experience different cultures and uh, different, uh, meet with different people and speak different languages, it gives you a, a different perspective, a broader perspective. And, and so when you come back and you work in, in the States, you can, you can work with everyone and equally and effectively. <clears throat> Do you speak any other languages other than well, English? I, I used to speak Italian pretty frequently. Okay. Yeah. And how long did you live in Italy? Two years. Two years, wow. Mm. Um, and I'm wondering how the Jesuit education at St. Peter's impacted all of your growth and all of the things that you took part in. Um, did that aspect of the Jesuit education have any impact on your life and your career? Well, the Jesuit education is, well, you can get an education from any university, any, you know, any institution of higher learning. Uh, but, you know, I think the values of the Jesuit education drives a person, you know. Um, you know, it's not something that you can see, you know, touch. It, it's something that you feel and and motivates you and impacts the way you do business with people. Okay, um, yeah, I would like people to say, "Hey, you know this this guy. He was good. He was open minded. Uh, he was he wasn't judgmental of people, and he appreciated everyone for who they were." Um, that that's you know what we would like for people to say. You know, to, to, that's the image you would want to and. And being coming from a Jesuit institution that promotes that, you know, Ignatius Loyola, that 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 theme, that thinking, um, is is very helpful. Okay, I, I wish more people in our country would, would be influenced by the, the Jesuit way of thinking. You know, certainly more today than ever. You know, because there's a there's a group of people out there that think that you know it's it's not. You know, it's not good to, to, to understand other people or and, and accept other people for who they are, it's their way and their kind and that, that kind of thing, so. Do you think being part of a Jesuit institution when you were at St. Peter's, because we talked about some of the larger societal issues that were occurring during your time, do you think that impacted the way people thought of these issues at St. Peter's or viewed them or the way that other students interacted with each other? Um, okay, so let's, let's say that again one more time. Away. Okay, so um, we talked about some of the larger societal issues that were occurring during your time at St. Peter's. Yeah. And I'm wondering if being part of a Jesuit institution influenced the way people thought about those um, is thought about what was going on or even the way other students interacted with each other that time? What, yes, yes. In the sense a, of, do you think the Jesuit aspect of St. Peter's made it more inclusive? Especially yes. considering um, that the civil rights movement was going on, that women were just, um, just became part of, were just um, admitted into St. Peter's. Yes, yes, but they, it, it helped a great deal. That it was a Jesuit institution because now we had to we had to live and demonstrate what we were saying. You had to take the Jesuit mantra and put it into action. Okay, it's one thing to say and speak it, but it's another thing to do it. So it did have an impact on most people. Of course, some people, you know, they aren't going to change. They're going to be who they are. Uh, unfortunately, but uh, for the most part, it was a very positive, it had a positive impact on their, all of the students, uh, you know, in, in, because there were, where students were involved in the civil rights movement, you know, a lot of students in Jersey City at the, at the, unit, at the Jersey City campus of St. Peter's were actively involved in some aspect of, of the movement, you know, 
whether it was, you know, student rights or whether it was uh, civil rights, you know, uh, you know, human rights, it, they were involved, okay? So they were organizing on campus when you were there? Oh, yes, yes, there were quite a few, you know, society, uh, society, improvement of society run uh, organization. Yeah, and I am actually um, very curious about a speech you had given in 2018. Um, and you said about Jersey City that racism was still there, but it wasn't in that format. And you were talking about um, when you transferred from Texas to St. Peter's. And can you um, describe what you meant by, th by that? And I'm wondering if that was also influenced by um, the civil rights movement and what was happening? So, so a speech I gave, what, 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 where did you get that? You, you were there or not? No, I actually, when I was looking you up, there's a lot of articles about you. I don't know if you've ever looked yourself up, no. um, but yeah, it was, um, I believe published by um, the Jersey Journal, newjersey.com. And it was a speech given at um, one temple. Oh, the Bethel, Bethel Temple. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think I touched on that in the beginning when we talked mm -hmm. about when you asked me the transfer and the transfer mm -hmm. student that I said mm -hmm. I was coming from Texas, in which there the Jim Crow, you know, laws were still mm -hmm. in effect there. And then I came back to New Jersey. That's that's what I meant by that. Um, you know, that certainly had an influence on my mm -hmm. thinking, not only at St. Peter's, but now, I mean, it, all that's something you'll never forget. That experience. Um, so, <clears throat> I, I that was uh, they had that in the paper. I was looking at that in New Jersey, right? Oh, oh. Yeah, they did have that in the paper. Um, there's yeah. a lot about you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's all good. <laughs> yes, and it covers all of the different things you've done throughout your life and throughout your career. So it was great for me as like a history student to mm. be able to see all of those. Um, in a way, primary source documents. So it was great. Good, good. And going back to your career after St. Peter's, what has been your favorite role since you graduated? Um, and would you say, because I know you also served on the board of trustees for a while, you were a former Hudson County freeholder, um, and how did those roles differ? Um, they, <clears throat> uh, I've had, you know, an opportunity to serve in the political arena, uh, firsthand, uh, as a county freeholder, or as a council person, um, I've had the, um, the opportunity to be involved in community nonprofit organizations and boards. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be involved with higher education and the the government and administration of, of a higher education institution. Uh, I've had a wide variety of experiences um, that has helped me to become a better person, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, there's, there's no one particular experience that's better than the other. They're all equally as important in, in, you know, in your development. So that's, there was, I consider those all developmental type of stepping stones to, to my ultimate professional development. That is a great answer. Um, I was wondering, okay. So as a student, the board and the board of trustees is kind of like the governing body of St. Peter's. How did it feel to go from being a student and then getting becoming the first African American to be on the board of trustees um, and being responsible sort of for this university and the progress of the university? Well, it, it was gratifying, you know, to be there and be able to serve your 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 institution, to be able to serve St. Peter's. St. Peter's has been a wonderful stepping stone in my life. Um, you know, it, prepared me to, to go out and make a living, a, a great living for, 
you know, 40, 50 years. And uh, to be able to give back to the university your time and your energy, uh, that, that feels good. And it, to be able to bring a perspective of experience, um, it also is another, you know, feel good, you know, uh, situation. Um, so it, it's been, it's exhilarating to know that you, you can make a difference and that, you know, you're, you, you wanted to, you know, you wanted to be on, on, okay. Can, I, I need to take this call. Uh, can, we are, are you almost there? Are we almost there or? Yeah, I have two more questions. If you want, I can actually pause the recording because I know you, we're over time. Yes, it's okay. up to you what you want to do. Okay, let's pause the recording and give okay. me a minute, okay? Okay. And for one of my final questions, I just wanted to ask you, do you think St. Peter's is an, important, is an important institution of higher learning? And if so, why do you think so? Well, I think St. Peter's is an important institute of higher learning uh, because first of all, the quality of the content of the academic instruction is first class. And then secondly, um, it services students, it, it's, it services students who truly need this opportunity. Uh, you know, first, 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 first time, you know, first time, you know, college graduates, um, you know, the, the immigrations, the minorities, it, you know, with the Jesuit, the, with the Jesuit motto and it, 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 it really, is important and you need institutions and organizations that are trying to, you know, address those who can really appreciate, you know, the, the importance of getting a, a higher a degree of higher education. And for my final question, is there anything you'd like to share that I didn't ask or anything you'd like to conclude with? Well, you've asked everything. We got a chance to talk a lot. You were very, you're very good. Uh, you've got a wonderful personality. Um, Thank you. You're easy to talk to, okay? And very, you know, very charismatic in your way and very understanding. Uh, and you really encourage people to say whatever's on their mind. So thank you for that opportunity. Thank you for being who you are. And uh, and I, I think, you know, I know I, I'm, I'm comfortable with, what we discussed on, you know, the, the opportunity you've given me. Thank you so much for, for your time, Dr. Webster. This has been an amazing interview, an amazing experience for me, and I hope you had a great time as well. I did, you can. <laughs> okay, so I want you to enjoy your weekend. You too. And enjoy your life and God, you know, may, may you know, the higher power, the, you know, bless you and everything that you do. And if you can, if I can ever be of any assistance in any way, don't don't hesitate to shoot me. You got my email, yes. so you just just shoot me an email and call me and say, hey, Doc, I need to talk to you about something. You know, okay? That is an amazing offer. Thank you so much for being amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 -bye. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too.